Hey guys, got a brand new video for you today and I just woke up, coffee. Ah, yes. Anyway, last night Fuji announced new firmware for the X-T2, the GFX, the X-T1. It's crazy they're still adding firmware to the X-T1. Uh, the X-Pro2 and I think the X-T20. I might have forget some of the other smaller cameras, but this new firmware for the X-T2 is version 2.10, 2.10. And uh, this adds the wireless tethering feature that I was talking about in my last video where I did wired tethering. I didn't expect them to come out with this so soon, but they did, which is crazy. Anyway, you're gonna have to update your plugins for Lightroom if you wanna be able to use this option, obviously. I'm gonna use the free plugin still. I'm gonna use the X-Acquire version 1.6 now. So I'll show you that at the end of the video, just how it works and the transfer speed and stuff like that. I have a feeling it won't be nearly as fast as USB 3, but we gotta give it a test, right? They added a bunch more like functions to the autofocus settings. Um, obviously the new option of all is added to the autofocus mode. This option you can use the command dial to select all the autofocus points if you want to in the box. They've also added a couple other features that don't really matter to me. Switch over the sub display and dual display mode. Uh, function assign the rear command dial. Uh, this is pretty cool, I'm gonna show you why. Um, you can actually use the rear command dial in the X-T2 now as a button and assign it to any function you want. Uh, they've added image transfer speed becomes faster between smartphone and tablet from a memory card in slot 2. Okay, I didn't know from slot 2. I always use just slot 1 to transfer from. And they also fix the phenomenon in manual focus mode. A focus can shift in a specified condition. Repeated CL shooting. I guess continuous low. I don't know. Anyway, I will update the firmware and we'll go through some of these new settings. So the next feature they added was being able to select all in the autofocus points. So go to your autofocus modes, mine's the up button here, and then you go down, you can choose all. So now when you push in on that, you can actually scroll the wheel and go all the way out to the edge, which works pretty well. I don't think I would ever use that, but it is an option. I usually just use the smallest focus point. Okay, so one of the other features they added was allowing you to use this command dial, pushing it in and using it as a button for any of the functions. So hold the display button. And now you can see we have this new function at the top here. Uh, what you have to do is actually go all the way up and it's showing it on the second page now. So now the rear command dial is now selectable. And the cool thing is you can make this back button focus now. So we'll select that and you gotta go to AF on. So now this can be back button focus. So that's pretty sick. And the main reason why I say it's awesome is because the AEL button and the AFL button are way too small for back button focus. When trying to control the camera, the buttons are way too small. It makes your thumb cramp. I actually had this button assigned to back button focus, but now this can be back button focus. The only annoying thing is it kind of rolls on your finger when you push in on it, but it's still pretty cool. Okay, so the next option is in the EVF, and they've added negative six and seven in the EV, so you can turn the brightness down if it's too bright. Let's go to screen setup, EVF brightness, manual, and as you can see, it now goes down really low. Basically, my camera can't even pick it up. There's five, six, and then seven, and it can't pick it up, but it does go that low. I thought it was gonna go higher, but it still stops at five. So it's actually negative six and seven. Okay, we're gonna go to menu. We're gonna go down to the wrench. We're gonna go to connection setting, wireless settings. You're gonna go to access point settings and you're gonna go to manual setup. Select from a network list. Then you're gonna choose your router from the list. I've already typed in my password, but once you've done that, it'll auto connect and it'll just say registration complete just like this, and then you hit okay. 
Then you go to menu again, connection setting, and you're gonna go to shoot mode and turn it to wireless fixed. Now you can see this red light blinking right here, and it switches to orange and red, and that means it's looking for the plug-in to be connected. So on the computer, you're gonna to wanna to open up the XAcquire plugin, click on it, go to preferences, and then you're gonna to go to network and you're gonna go search within segment and hit okay. Then the camera will connect and it'll show a green light. And then we can actually go to window here and it shows the X-T2 is connected, the shutter speed, the f-stop, the ISO, stuff like that, and the white balance. So yeah, now we're connected wirelessly and let's open Lightroom up here and see how fast these files transfer. So I am going to go to the destination folder on my desktop and do my tethered test folder. So the destination folder is now set where the files are going to import off the camera to the computer. We're going to go to auto import, auto import settings, choose we're going to use the tethered test folder and hit OK. So now when we take a picture, this is going to be raw and JPEG. See how fast it transfers. So I'm assuming when this is blinking red and green, it's transferring the files over through wireless. Still hasn't transferred yet. And I have a pretty fast router. I'm using the Apple Airport Extreme. It's a pretty fast router. It may not be the fastest these days, but it's still pretty fast. Still hasn't transferred. Oh, the file just showed up right now. Not into Lightroom though, but it showed in on the little plugin. Okay, so it just showed up into Lightroom now. Let's try this test again. I'm gonna put a timer on it just to see how fast it is. All right, so since it was extremely slow doing JPEG and RAW, I'm just gonna switch this over to JPEG now and see how fast it is. All right guys, so those are some of the features that we just got on the Fuji X-T2 with the new firmware update. Obviously the main one I wanted to see was the wireless tethering. I didn't go over everything, but the wireless tethering to me is the biggest update to this camera. And it kind of takes a few steps to get it set up, but I did have the camera disconnect and then reconnect itself back to the plugin. So if it does disconnect, you don't have to go back through all the steps because the camera auto times out after a bit of time to save battery. And what happened is it turned off, disconnected. And then when I turned it back on, it actually reconnected to the plugin and I was kind of nervous at first that it was gonna to have to redo it, but I didn't have to, so that's amazing. That's just a good user experience, that's what you want. The only downside is that it's really slow and I kind of thought that it would be really slow. Um, it took like 45 seconds, I can't remember what it was, to transfer a RAW and JPEG, but uh, doing just JPEGs is 14 seconds. Still kind of slow if you're expecting instant results. Still quicker to use USB 3. Obviously I didn't use the Adobe Pro plugin, I used the X-Acquire free plugin. I don't know if the Adobe one's faster, Maybe I should spend the money and get it just so I can show you guys, but uh, for now, USB tethering is still faster than wireless. Pretty obvious. Anyway, thanks for watching this quick little update video. I just wanted to make sure that I got this out in time because you never know, Fuji might come up with another firmware update next week and blow our minds. F-Log internal, that's all I'm asking for. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you just liked it, give it a thumbs down twice, and I'll see you in the next one.